This was one of those out of the ordinary inshore days where we just got really lucky. We found incredible visibility, lots of bait fish, and we sort of just found big schools of mackerel, which were what we were after. And to top off the day, we just found a couple nice ornate crayfish um, in some shallower stuff. And so for this first dive, um, we actually started at one of the wrecks and the viz looks really bad. We um, started off with probably a meter to two meters max of visibility on these spots and we were a bit bummed because we thought this was going to sort of set the tone for the rest of the day and that we'd have quite a lot of trouble actually finding anything. Um, luckily it was only this spot here that seemed to be holding really bad visibility closer to the island and as soon as we punched out a little bit further we came to this spot where we found big schools of bait which were hugging these two big boulders that um, we often like to dive. It's a pretty good inshore spot for us and uh, generally they've got coral trout, um, a couple of smaller reds and when you're lucky and you've got bait like this generally what we're targeting is mackerel because with these inshore shoaly reef areas as soon as there's bait on them you get lots of big Spanish mackerels, grey mackerels even golden trevallies and queenfish and um, on this day it seemed to be big mackerel schools were just schooling up and you know eating the bait that was there and so we took advantage of it and we just dove this spot for the next few hours we were trying to be a little bit more picky though um, we, we found there was lots of schools that had smaller mackerel and we didn't want to go off and shoot those ones to begin with we wanted to wait a little bit and actually find some of those bigger ones and this is a video of me down on the bottom. So this kind of visibility for this spot is really, really good. We rarely get um, fizz as good as this and it does make it a lot easier to target those fish because very often you're in about a meter to two meters and that's obviously pretty difficult. It didn't take us too long before we started finding those bigger mackerel and Nate was actually the first one to spot this nice big Spanish and I thought he was going to pull a shot on this video but he clearly thought he didn't have a good enough shot and so he held off and went up, did a rebreath and on his way back down the same fish came straight back in and he placed a perfect shot. Once we got the first mackerel in the boat, all the commotion seemed to bring in the schools a little bit closer into that bait ball. And you can sort of see on this dive, there was a pretty clear wall edge of um, this bait. So you don't very often see these type of baits. Um, this was in the summer months. So generally when that warmer water and we get the rainfall, um, and I've been told it's somewhat linked with that. Generally when we have a lot of um, freshwater runoff, these baits seem to just go off and then you get these big schools of mackerel which are congregating and feeding on them. I'm still just trying to be a little bit picky before I take a shot on my first mackerel. I've seen a few pretty big grey mackerel swimming around and that's actually been the, a fish that I've wanted to shoot for quite a while. I've only ever seen smaller ones and to break one that was over a meter was pretty exciting. Um, pretty cool inshore fish and they actually taste really good. Honestly, just as good as Spanish mackerel. And so this nice big one comes in and new PB for me. I could have probably put a better shot in there, but I just wanted to be safe and make sure I got the fish. And uh, this video is kind of an example of not what to do. So I kind of messed up a little bit and got tangled up all around the, the anchor line. I was trying my best not to have that happen, but clearly I couldn't stop it. And um, yeah, definitely be careful of stuff like this, especially in inshore dirty water. The last thing you want to do is have a bleeding fish just dangling around with you because you never know what's lurking in the murk. The next couple dives I did, I just sort of spent the time to sort of figure out where these mackerel were sitting in relation to the bait. You often find them sitting on the outskirts of them and it's when that bait sort of flashes in and out that they come in and um, try to eat one. And so you can sort of see this bait is really worked up. So 
that's sort of good for you because you know that those bigger fish are nearby and um, this is Ivan's POV he misses a pretty big gray mackerel um, I would have said that one was easily over a meter as well but luckily on his next dive down he finds another big one and puts a good holding shot into it and so you can just sort of see he's trying to put tension on that line um, down the bottom you can't really see it but there is lots of coral reef so the last thing you want is it getting tangled down there because it was around 15 to 17 meters deep on the bottom um, but yeah he played it perfectly and he got this mackerel in the boat and that was another one over the one meter mark which is really big for those gray mackerels At this stage of the day, I've seen plenty of mackerel swim by. I'm pretty sure I've seen a few that I would have thought were between that 10 to 15 kilo range. And those are the ones that I'm really trying to look for at the moment. Um, I've seen them swim in, but they're a lot more skittish than the smaller ones. And I couldn't quite close the gap between myself and those bigger fish. But um, persistence obviously is what you gotta do in this situation. And so we just kept diving. Um, I tried to use my throw flasher to try and get a bit more curiosity out of the fish and on one of the dives it actually did work out for me. Um, one of those bigger Spanish mackerel did come in real close but I wasn't ready to take the shot and I had to retrieve the throw flasher before it sunk to the bottom and so I missed my window opportunity to take that shot and you can sort of see there those big mackerel are coming in and right there that was a pretty big Spanish I would have said that one was at least 8 to 10 kilos and I was trying to get a shot in but um, couldn't quite get close enough to him and he swam off another thing to note is when you've got mackerel schools like this feeding on bait they're generally not gonna leave the area especially if you're inshore and the baits clearly congregating on a small piece of structure and so if you do come across stuff like this, you don't have to quickly you know, jump straight on them and take a shot on the first one you see. Um, if you can, it's better to hold off, see what's actually around, and then potentially get that larger fish at the end of the day. On my last dive, I managed to close the gap between me and this pretty big Spanish. I mean, it wasn't anything incredible but it was one of the bigger ones in the school and it was what I was after. So it did take a while, obviously, before I was able to get close enough, but once I did, um, I got a reasonably good holding shot in, but I wanted Nate to just put it back up just in case. And then um, luckily we landed that fish and we were pretty much done with that spot and decided to move off to a crayfish area.